Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and um, I have a, an interesting topic today that also has some disturbing implications. Uh, so I uh, love to start at the beginning here. In 1998, Dr. Andrew Wakefield and 12 other authors including John Walker Smith who was one of the most well-respected gastroenterologists in Europe at that time published an article in The Lancet that caused a firestorm that is still going on today and is largely being lied about by most of the people who talk about it. The article was a case series and reported that 12 children who were brought to the Royal Free in London for examination had both evidence of gastrointestinal disease and autism. Most of the parents reported that the onset of symptoms followed administration of the MMR vaccine. During subsequent years, Wakefield became much more outspoken about the potential harms resulting from vaccines, mainly cautioning about administering multiple vaccines at the same time, and suggesting that spacing them out might be a better idea. He published more articles in medical journals, he served as an expert witness in lawsuits against vaccine makers, and he tried to influence for the better policies in the United Kingdom regarding vaccines. Well, in order to send a clear message to the rest of the medical community that those who speak out against vaccines would be seriously punished. Wakefield lost his medical license in the UK and subsequently moved to the United States. Um, as it turned out, Wakefield and his colleagues were right about many things. One was damage to the microbiome being associated with symptoms of autism. And I will just stop for a minute. Um, I watched this video over the weekend, Vaxxed, uh, from cover up to catastrophe. I knew some of the information in the film. I knew that what was being said about this article in The Lancet and what had happened with uh, Andrew Wakefield was patently false. And by the way, John Walker Smith, who also was an author of this article, uh, the UK tried to take his medical license away. He fought back. He still has his medical license. The authorities prey on people who do not have the financial wherewithal to defend themselves, and that's who they make an example out of. But uh, anyway, I learned some new things in this film, some new horror things. And I was just saying before we filmed this segment that uh, um, I wasn't able to sleep Saturday night because I was so upset about uh, what I saw. But anyway, let's go on ahead and, and uh, with that as an introduction, talk about what I want to come to next, which is that autism spectrum disorders are increasingly common, involve things like social interaction that's impaired, restricted, uh, sometimes absent communication, repetitive and stereotypical behaviors with limited activities and interests. More and more research is showing that the gut microbiome might be involved since many autistic children suffer from gastrointestinal problems, which include things like constipation and diarrhea. Often the severity of the GI symptoms is correlated with the severity of autism, autistic symptoms. In turn, autism symptoms have been correlated with uh, negative changes in the gut microbiome. Dysbiosis of the gut is caused or aggravated by the fact that a significant percentage of autistic children have a history of treatment with antibiotics during the first three years of life. Several studies have confirmed that children with autism also have microbiomes that are considerably different than children who do not have autism. Now, to go to another topic, and I'll tie these together in a minute, fecal transplant involves the transfer of stool from a healthy person into the gastrointestinal tract of another person uh, for the purpose of treating conditions like C. diff, inflammatory bowel disease, and other GI-related disorders. Since it appears that the onset of autism and autism symptoms are related to GI health and changes in the gut microbiome in many children, it's entirely possible that repairing the microbiome could be an effective treatment for autism. We certainly have seen that here and as a part of the treatment. It's not a magical treatment, but it definitely makes a difference. Well, a new study included 18 children between the ages of 7 and 17 years of age who had been diagnosed with autism and also had gastrointestinal symptoms, and 20 age and gender match controls who did not have autism. The ASD or autism, autism group included more children who were delivered by C-section, more children who were fed non-standard formulas during infancy, breastfed for significantly shorter periods of time, had more food allergies and were more likely to have eczema. The ASD uh, children also ate a lower fiber diet, as did their mothers. And by the way, one thing I'll point out here, one of the gross misrepresentations that is being made is that people who are concerned about this connection between vaccines and autism are claiming that vaccines are the only cause 
I've been speaking about this issue for a long time, and I'm crystal clear on the fact that vaccines are not the only cause, and what you have somewhat is the perfect storm of things that start with perhaps C-section birth, changes to the microbiome, antibiotics uh, taken from an early age, and many, many things. So anyway, going back to our study here, the children received two weeks of antibiotic treatment followed by a bowel cleanse and then a fecal transplant. There was a high dose followed by lower doses administered over a seven to eight week period of time. Now following the transplant, the kids were less hyperactive, they were less irritable, they were less lethargic, and with five, within five weeks they had experienced an 80% reduction in gastrointestinal symptoms. The children had a long history of GI symptoms and abdominal pain, indigestion, diarrhea, constipation improved and remained improved eight weeks after the treatment was stopped. The children also had decreases in the number of days with abnormal or no stools. As for ASD behaviors, the average developmental age increased by 1.4 years across all domains. We're talking about two months, people, uh, two months, and this happened. Some children, uh, and those included, by the way, communication, uh, daily living skills, and socialization. Some children had received the transplant orally, some rectally. It didn't make any difference. The symptoms improved to the same degree. While the initial antibiotic treatment was accompanied by mild to moderate hyperactivity, tantrums, and aggression, no long-term adverse events were reported. And by the way, antibiotics are notorious for damaging the gut microbiome, so it makes perfect sense that that might have set off some behavior issues that uh, look like those that were described. Now, at the beginning of the study, bacterial diversity was quite limited in the ASD children, um, but by 18 weeks and 16 out of 18 kids, the bacterial diversity was the same as the age-matched normal controls. And this included significant increases, a fourfold increase, in fact, in bifidobacterium. While the findings are significant, the authors acknowledge that their study was not randomized, placebo-controlled, or blinded, and that further research is needed. I'm always all for further research, but having said that for many years, I've written about the fact and spoken about the fact that autism is not a neurological disease, but rather a gastrointestinal disorder that results in neurological symptoms. This recent study and the references in the paper, and by the way, that I just wrote, by the way, those of you who write to me every week saying put the citations and video clips, the citations are in the Health Briefs Library along with the articles. All you have to do is subscribe to the library. You have 2,500 articles to choose from. But anyway, all of this body of evidence that I'm referencing here uh, indicate that, um, that the, it is a GI disorder in large part with neurological symptoms. I agree that more research is needed, but there's absolutely no, no reason that I can think of not to attempt to treat autistic children for their gastrointestinal distress. It's not expensive. It apparently makes a big difference. We've seen this here. The medical research shows this and this recent study shows this, and there's absolutely no risk associated with doing it. The study is, that, that I talked about here is further encouraging because it included older children who have been uh, previously thought to be much harder to help. That's certainly been my experience, that the earlier the child, um, uh, after diagnosis, that the child is engaged in the right diet and, and uh, habits and training and therapy and that sort of thing, the more likely you are to turn things around. But these kids would... Uh, if you'd asked me before I read this article about the likelihood that something profound uh, like this could happen, I would have told you it wasn't likely. So I'm incredibly encouraged by what I see here. Um, kind of circling back around to where I started, um, you know, there's a lot of conversation today about fake news. And, um, uh, and, and I think almost everybody agrees we have a major problem with our press. And one of the things that uh, is said and this, this movie was made a long time before fake news was being talked about, is uh, one of the people that was featured in the film said, um, you know, apparently the drug companies have not only bought the CDC and the FDA, they've bought television too. That's why the contrary point of view is almost always marginalized um, because who are the biggest advertisers in the media? The drug companies. They're getting their way. It is a shameful practice that drug companies are allowed to advertise in the United States. We're only one of two countries, New Zealand is the other one, that allows this practice. And one of the ways we could drain the medical swamp is to stop that practice. If, they, if these people could not control what was delivered via television, newspaper, uh, magazines, etc., uh, and um, if they were not reaching the public directly, we would start to um, get to the truth about these kinds of things. It would be much harder to deceive the public. 
All right, well, that's all for today. As usual, uh, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you on Tuesday with more news.